Hello everyone. We have now Torben Snakestad to join us, and Torben has uh, done um, several major scale artistic research projects, and as uh, as many of you know, uh, employee here at RMC. Torben has also just half a year ago started on a brand new project that I think he probably will talk mostly about today, but we will hear that. So, uh, Torben, here you go. Thank you, Jakob. Uh, I think I will uh, start by sharing my screen. And I decided uh, to uh, talk about this uh, new project uh, that I'm uh, conducting together with uh, CERN, Kago, also a colleague here at the school. And it's a two-year uh, project. And uh, like you said, Jakob, we're kind of uh, the first uh, half year has passed by very quickly under strange circumstances. So uh, the title for our project is uh, Traversing Sonic Territories. And as I said, uh, I'm uh, one part of this project, CERN is the other part. Um, this half year, uh, it's maybe fair to say that I have been mainly involved in the project and the reason for this I will come uh, back to. But the question we uh, ask ourselves in uh, this um, research project is what happens when we borrow other musicians' sounds? And how can such a transgression of seemingly personal territories contribute to an expanded understanding of our sonic identity and musical imagination? So this project in its core deals with uh, sampling technology. And it investigates the dialogical relationship between sounds and musical gestures as on one hand, a personal language, and on the other, a common sonic territory within the field of contemporary experimental music and improvisation. That's our context we work in, uh, both CERN and I mainly, uh, experimental music and improvisation. So our ambition is to challenge the idea of a personal sound, which is widespread conception within improvised music, and consequently to investigate how a radicalized sharing of these sounds can contribute to an expansion of improvisational horizons. In other words, uh, what we do in this project is to record and make samples out of our uh, singular language as improviser. Uh, I'm a saxophone player or woodwind player. Myself, CERN is a piano player. Been working a lot in this field of uh, improvisation, uh, spending a lot of time uh, on our instruments and investigating all possibilities on that instrument and create a, what we call here a personal sound. What we want to do in this project is to sample these sounds and see if it's possible to swap sample libraries and play on each other's sounds. So the aim of the project is, uh, of course, for us, an increased musical flexibility. It's about communication and collective art production. There's new ways of listening, playing and communicating, and hopefully new music, new art and new insights. So through this traversing of sonic territories that we swap samples and uh, execute, so meaning that I will, through my instrument, the saxophone mainly, will trigger piano samples and uh, vice versa. So we're traversing our sonic territories. And uh, I think this will provoke uh, fundamentally questions about habitable borders for what we can do and our imagination. There's five stages in this project. Uh, the first one is um, the sampling itself. And since we're in the beginning of the project, uh, a lot of this work uh, has been done 
in this first half year. Um, I will come back uh, a little bit to that, of course. And uh, CERN already in a former project has done a lot of uh, building up different sample libraries. So uh, I've been mainly focused on that uh, this half year myself. Then step two is uh, sharing, of course, of these sample libraries. Uh, also investigating how this uh, can be shared, how it can be shared, what kind of library, uh, what kind of language in that library. And the third stage is embedding it to our instrument to find a media solution in this case uh, to trigger our sounds. And we have uh, stage four, which of course go through all stages uh, of reflecting. Uh, but we have a certain way of uh, uh, reflecting uh, that actually CERN developed through his uh, former research project, which is a kind of critical listening reflection. I won't go so much into that uh, today. But the final step of this uh, project is quite interesting, uh, supplementing, meaning that when we have done this traversing of sonic territories uh, among each other, we're then going to end up again playing acoustic duo with our instrument, normal, and see uh, how that have changed uh, our view upon our own uh, personal sounds, our language. So it's a learning curve, it's a kind of circle. First we document what is this singular personal sounds, language, musical gestures we have. Then we sample it, make a library, we share it with each other, we embed it so we can uh, perform uh, on our instrument but with the other person sound and uh, we listen to the musical result, reflect upon that, what works, what does not work. And finally, we go then back again to our acoustic duo of saxophone piano with our own instruments and see what happens in regard to how we now understand our own language and how we can interact in this new setting. We're not completely alone in this project, uh, Søren and I, we have, um, which we have called uh, a critical reflection partner, uh, British sound artist, uh, David Toop. And we're also going in a later stage of the project, going to uh, connect uh, external musicians as well. Uh, Sina Parkins uh, playing the harp from the States is uh, going to join us, hopefully. Uh, we will have to see the, the COVID situation a bit, but uh, we're going to invite other musicians into this project and share our libraries with them as well. So, a little bit about the background of this uh, project. Uh, I mentioned that CERN, um, in his former research pro project, uh, have worked with uh, sampling uh, his piano language. And the project is named Multilateness in Solo Performance. And um, uh, I think he was f he finished the project in 19 or something, and uh, he's working on his exposition. Uh, on research catalog for everybody to see. I'm, I'm not quite sure if it's there already or soon to be uploaded. Um, but uh, CERN uh, worked with a um, video uh, keyboard. Uh, so he also uses uh, images and, and video in his project. Uh, but the core was uh, to create this multi layeredness to challenge that in all possible ways on the piano. So this, of course, uh, is a solid background to go into our project. So CERN already has this sample library. 
Uh, as Jakob mentioned, I have done uh, a couple of research, artistic research projects before, and the main one is uh, PhD, artistic research, uh, named The Poetics of a Multiphonic Landscape. And very briefly, I won't talk too much about that, but uh, very briefly, uh, the inspiration for this project was exactly this, uh, what is my language, what is my personal sound, and one major um, uh, component in that uh, is uh, what is called multiphonics. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's, uh, it's multiple pitches uh, played on an instrument that are, that are considered to be monophonic. Considered and constructed only to play one pitch as, at, uh, at a time. That was very interesting to explore this domain of, uh, of kind of radicalizing a saxophone language and work with these multiple pitches. So what I want to do here and what I kind of question myself and I could hear this music inside me but couldn't uh, unfold it yet um, was uh, how would it be if the raw musical material in, in, uh, in creating a set of solo saxophone works is based on these multiphonics only. And what this material in itself suggests, possibly independent by any stylistic affiliation. I can tell you a lot about this project, but it was an acoustic project. And I ended up as a main result of the research by, uh, by, uh, um, having an archive box, a kind of a personal multiphonic library. And inside that one, uh, there's different cards of different fingerings on the saxophone. I document the pitch, I document uh, uh, embouchure, uh, dynamics, all kinds of ins information to myself so I can recreate that uh, mul particular multiphonic. Uh, so maybe you are curious about how these multiphonic sounds, so let's play a short snippet here. So this, uh, these sounds I uh, investigated on, uh, on soprano saxophone and tenor saxophone, and I also constructed uh, during the project a hybrid uh, instrument that I call the reed trumpet. And uh, the, the artistic result of this project is a trilogy of, uh, of solo albums, uh, Winds of Mouth, uh, is a record where I uh, where I multi-track, and the reed tr trumpet is a solo recording only with this uh, hybrid instrument, and uh, plateau is uh, solo uh, soprano and tenor saxophone, and all of this is uh, is done in the acoustic domain. So all I did in this recording was adding a slightly reverb and making sure that the, the recording sounded kind of strident. So uh, where am I now? Uh, when I started uh, this uh, in September, the main issue for me was, of course, to uh, sample uh, all these multiphonics and all other sounds on my instrument and uh, kind of making an idiosyncratic sample library uh, that I could use for both solo and ensemble settings. So I spent uh, the majority of my time in, uh, in studio uh, 
sampling all kinds of sound and uh, the sample library I have now is uh, is very very immense uh, I haven't uh, I haven't edited completely uh, yet but uh, soon uh, CERN will uh, will get it and I sampled all these instruments here that you see soprano tenor baritone and bass saxophone metal clarinet bass clarinet and uh, trumpet and the thing um, I have been also working with a lot is uh, is uh, expanding uh, also my personal language. I also prepared some instruments uh, and and uh, recorded as well as these multiphonics. I recorded mo uh, monophonics. I recorded phrases, all kinds of stuff. So maybe I can show you. Just a short trumpet experiment where I have a, a special mute, which is a metal plate. So out of that recording, I could uh, I can uh, I can get several of uh, of small sample snippets, and I think my uh, my library as of now is uh, above five thousand of those samples. And a little bit about that uh, has an overview of how I plan to finally organize it. Um, I have monophonic sounds and different parameters. I have multiphonic sounds. Uh, have some specific short sounds. I have what I called here water works, which is I uh, I use water in the instrument. Breath works, which is mainly just breathing through the instrument in different ways. I document some phrases, some tropes, gestures, longer stretches of that kind of, uh, um, yeah, a musical phrase, you might say. And I've also been diving a little bit into if, uh, if it's a good idea to manipulate the sounds. So I've been exploring Melodyne, which uh, some of you might know and see if I actually can go inside there because this, it has this uh, polyphonic function. If I go, go inside there and slightly change pitches and dynamics to manipulate them. But it's a little bit outside the core of the project which is to document these raw acoustic sounds and swap them. And I also uh, stack some multiphonics and stack some sounds above each other and, and do multi-track uh, sounds as well in this library. There's a big issue for me now, uh, how, to, how to construct it. And I, I think I ended up with the idea of making several uh, sample library. One for myself, which is, might be a little bit more technical uh, towards the different uh, playing techniques on the instrument. Uh, and one for CERN, uh, which will be a little bit more metaphorical and uh, explain uh, and, and put them in groups in different ways. So um, at the very moment now, I'm working with how to construct that. I played around with the idea if I'm going to call certain sounds for lip works, finger works, tongue works, air works, weed works, etc., also been um, thinking about dividing them into microspheres and macrospheres. By the way, inspired by uh, philosopher Peter Sloterdijk, which has this trilogy of books called Bubbles, Form and Globe. And Bubble is this microspheres in the society. Globe is the macrospheres and Foam is the relationships between them. But this is uh, where I'm at right now actually how to to edit the the 
the last bit of, uh, of recordings and, and constructing this uh, sound library. I want to show uh, some of the music I uh, have composed and record um, the last few months actually. So just to show a little bit about how I use these uh, samples as of now. Uh, I have an excerpt from uh, a piece I made in mid-November. Uh, the title is uh, Mørke har myke hender. That's Norwegian. And uh, translated it would uh, be something like darkness has soft hands. And here I have several of my uh, instruments in play. Uh, soprano, tenor, bass saxophone, uh, this metal clarinet and bass clarinet and trumpet. And it's, it's a short uh, snippet, so... And another project I've been uh, working on is a project together with a Sami uh, folk singer called uh, Sara Mariel Gaup. And um, uh, this music is, of course, uh, very much uh, inspired by the north of uh, Norway. And... Uh, I really found a place for my uh, my aesthetics uh, together with her. So I will actually uh, want to play two uh, snippets. The one is four minutes, uh, Mongolian. And the uh, second one is uh, just an excerpt, uh, uh, two minutes. So I hope that's okay. So here we go.
And the next one is uh, uh, shorter, uh, except and um, here I've used uh, a lot of the clefs of my instrument to create uh, some uh, rhythmic uh, patterns. So let's hear that. I see time flies, but uh, just a super uh, quick one um, because um, this uh, working with this uh, sample library and and working in different projects now, it's uh, I think it's uh, it's great to explore the potential of, of uh, which context uh, my sounds can operate in, 
uh, not only in kind of experimental improvised uh, music. So uh, um, this term I also made uh, music for a promotion video for a book release, a Norwegian book called Mayday. So in here, um, maybe you won't hear it that clearly because it's a lot of... Uh, of other sounds in there, but it's uh, it's uh, a drum kit and my sample library mainly. Tiger 13, immediate scramble to intercept Russian fighter. Copy. presenterer Mayday, en arktisk thriller av Grete Bø, kommer 29. januar. That was some sounds I've been uh, working with, and uh, now I'm supposed to talk a little bit about my live setup, uh, but I think I will skip that and go straight to what we're working on at the moment. And uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to make, sure make sure you have, you have time, time for, for the questions. questions also. Yeah, I know. I will. I will super fast go through this because, uh, uh, of course, this uh, uh, playing uh, both my own samples and Cern's piano samples uh, on an, on my instrument to come as close to my instrument as possible. There's some different option of MIDI uh, uh, saxophones and and what have you. A hype sax, meta sax, uh, syntophone, etc. And uh, there are some systems developed, but uh, I'm working with Gianluca Elia, a brilliant uh, Italian uh, musician and, and super collider expert, among others. So we're working on a system at the moment with a, a, a piezo microphone and a Bela uh, processor that you could see here. And, and we're having great result uh, as of now, now. so uh, hopefully uh, in by May or something we could really start testing out how it works and how it feels to play piano through my uh, saxophone. So here we're experimenting also with another type of mic called Intermic, but I won't go into that. So. To sum up, really, uh, we're in this stage, number one, of sampling and go entering into this uh, uh, stage two, where we're going to share our uh, sample libraries and then apply them to suitable MIDI controllers that are instrument-specific as possible and... Uh, and relates, uh, I mean, relates to the conventional mechanics. Therefore, I, I will use my uh, my normal uh, tenor saxophone to trigger this sample. So there's, there's where we're really at in this project uh, now. And as I said, uh, the end of this journey is, of course, now we're going to see how the musical result is going to pan out with CERN. Uh, between CERN and I and between uh, our other collaborators. And the interesting part in the end of the projects is to see then how this uh, possibly have changed our own understanding of uh, our uh, playing and our sounds, uh, our personal. Yes, so um, we have a number of questions in the Q&A and maybe... Uh, because of this delay situation, maybe Tom, you could read them yourself. When you finally play together on the MIDI instrument, will you play the saxophone or... Yeah, I think I touched up on that uh, uh, at the end here, but uh, yes, I will play the saxophone uh, using a, a, a specific uh, microphone um, and trigger samples through that. 
that means, of course, that there, there will be some acoustic sounds coming from my instrument. Uh, so we're working also with muting the instrument, but uh, I think when we, when we do live performance, uh, some acoustic saxophone sound will leak, but uh, not too much. How much are you ta taking into consideration that you are sampling your own sound for CERN? Oh, yeah. Do you have your personal sound more in mind or him? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, because uh, the music we hear now, of course, I've, I've been, I've been uh, mainly doing that for myself. And, and I, 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 of course, consider CERN along the way now, uh, at least for for how to construct uh, this library, how, how, what material should be there. Maybe the, some material is not so relevant for CERN, but it's also a feedback I will get from him. Uh, I will now start with sharing a smaller library of things that I think will work uh, well for on his uh, MIDI uh, keyboard. And I also forgot to mention that uh, uh, a lot of the sound snippets you heard, um, particularly the long one, uh, Mongolian, I've worked with, uh, with a, a MIDI keyboard myself, uh, playing clarinet samples and stuff. So I, I kind of checked out a lot of these samples, how they will work by trigger with a um, um, piano MIDI keyboard. Uh, Alex writes, I did not quite understand the use of the MIDI samples of the other sounds triggered by your own instrument. Yes, it is. Will similar timbres to your own be triggered? Or how is that decided? And more importantly, how will it help you discover your own sound more? I'm not sure if I understand it. Yeah, of course, uh, l let me, let me uh, say it, put it this way. Making this sample library is, of course, a journey upon documenting one's own uh, aesthetic and uh, one's own uh, musical language. It's all kinds of considerations going into that pot. Uh, I have my habits, I have my way of using these samples in the music you, you just uh, heard. And the uh, interesting thing for me is to hand this over to CERN and see what he does with these sounds. So how do, does CERN as a piano player go into this uh, material of mine that are, of course, played with air and a, and, and a total other uh, physicality of the instrument? Vice versa, uh, with me working with a piano uh, sound of, of CERN, um, I, through my saxophone, can uh, can use certain uh, uh, certain dynamics and uh, vibrato and stuff like that. So it's I could shape hopefully a CERN's piano sounds in in uh, in slightly different ways that CERN does, as well as I have some habit of playing uh, a saxophone that I will imply to to his samples, and I think uh, there's, there's a whole other musical outcome of that. Now, in the end, it will be interesting to then, for me, hear how CERN are going about my sounds. And hopefully he, he, he uses it so differently than I have ever thought about, that it, it will influence my own playing again, back in the acoustic domain then. I hope that explained a little bit. Uh, Agnes, again, uh, what is your expectation now about how it will be later on when you and CERN play your duo on your own instrument? What is the expectation looks like during this state of the process? Uh, I think I answered that a little bit in uh, uh, just recently. Uh, my main expectation now is um, that I have actually no idea what kind of music uh, CERN and I will be able to to unfold. It depends so much about uh, technology and how fluently we could work with that. And uh, it also 
takes it will take a lot of time to go into CERN sample library. And I think we will find ourselves in this continuum of maybe not being able to improvise that much, but uh, that we have to be more compositional about the material we use. Um, my expectation is uh, for, for the duo going back to the acoustic domain again. Uh, I can't really tell, but I hope, of course, that uh, it will change my, uh, my playing and my habits. And at least uh, I think it's, it certainly will change the interaction with CERN in this duo because we've been working so much, so deeply with each other's sound through this sample library. Is it a very different process of recording yourself uh, for the cataloging and for the for the future catalog rather than to make a performance? And is it is it uh, is there any problems in having this uh, not for the moment uh, improv uh, instrument treatment? Maybe. Yeah, uh, I would say it's uh, it's a it's a challenge at least. And as I said uh, as well, making this sample library and having uh, CERN in, in mind, what helped me now, uh, the half year now, was that I actually checked it out on keyboard myself while working with these uh, different projects. Um, and that, that again changed uh, how I recorded and how I chose uh, snippets of, of uh, samples as well. But uh, I think, yes, there's a, there's a huge danger that a lot of the spontaneity uh, disappears uh, with, with, with these samples and technologies. Uh, but I think we also can uh, be able to create uh, music that we haven't unfolded yet. Yeah, and this is, uh, I missed that question. Uh, the starting point of doing this project, uh, that's actually a good uh, question, but uh, I'm, the starting point is that CERN and I have a duo, been playing together uh, for several years, also in different uh, constellations. And we wanted to, uh, to expand uh, and work uh, in different ways in this duo setting. And uh, at the The, the back curtain of, uh, of uh, this project is, of course, that we have had these two individual solo projects and we wanted to see, can we, can we make uh, an ensemble project and that will bring uh, a lot of the material from these two other solo projects uh, that we already have uh, completed and uh, build up on that. What's the next step? So to me... The next step uh, for working with, for instance, Multiphonics was to, uh, to, to sample and work more with electronics in, in uh, different ways. Uh, I played a lot of acoustic solo concert. I mean, I'm really a lot of acoustic concert. And the past one and a half year, I've been exploring uh, uh, the electronic, acoustic uh, electronic world as well. So to, to me, it's a natural uh, kind of uh, development in my own solo project and as well for CERN uh, to see how this video keyboard uh, or this, he will not use the video keyboard, but the, the, the piano samples from that project and bring it into uh, complete the other domain. In this case, a duo and then later on uh, uh, ensemble with some other musicians. So... It is uh, now time to wrap up. Thank you so much, Torben. But I will close this meeting for now. Thank you to everyone for participating. Thank you for listening. And be safe out there, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>